they search their place, they say that they kidnap somebody. The boys were, were crying. The call keep coming and coming and coming. It was Sadiq. Uh, he's a Nigerian. They say that these boys adopted Manish, kill Manish, and eat Manish. So the story at the outset sounded absolutely crazy to me and I could not believe it at first that something like this was possible. The local residents had barged into the home of five Nigerians and checked their refrigerator for pieces of human body parts. No media house was actually willing to believe the story or uh, you know carry any reports on that. When I went there, the people there were more than 4,000 people. 4,000 Indians, and the police were everywhere. I went inside with the police. We searched everything to know whether we are going to see skin part, human being. How I do this is that I will knock, please. Uh, my name is Charles. I'm the, the vice president. Uh, please, uh, the police want to do their duty. Please allow us. Let them do their, their duty. So the police will search, search the port, search the everything, you know? It was a, an embarrassment, but I thank God none of them uh, took it as embarrassment. And then the next thing we did was to, to start a putting call to various students, to mobilize them. And then we mounted pressure on the police until the five boys were released. You are not bad people. All these things think that you guys are the Police assured us that, you know, they have found no evidence against these boys. These boys have been falsely accused, and that's why they are releasing them to us. Uh, again, uh, there was no media presence there that day. And uh, the day after that, which was a Monday, the local residents of Greater Noida, they took out a counter march to protest the protest by the Africans. At that point, we were actually not sure if these uh, images and video needs to be put out because the media till that point of time had shown little or no interest in covering the issue. The uh, reporters I was speaking to completely uh, disbelieved that Indians could be racist as well. It was uh, in UP. I think it was near Saranpur. I forgot. It was like Nizapur something. It, the university was local university. It was in construction. And I think we were the first African, or I can say black, to be on that area or maybe that city. Because the experience even didn't uh, give us more opportunity to to perform in our study because it was just too much hurt. Sometimes you just see people, you don't know what they're speaking, they look at you, they are laughing, they are, they are there, so you feel so bad. Even I don't know, it was a job, but it would, you know, to make me also like participate in your job. You are just in your side, you look at me, you are smiling, you are laughing at me. I, I don't know what you are saying. I can just say why they are laughing at me like this. So when we go near them, they just, I don't know, sometimes go uh, a little bit far from us, you know, so we cannot fall. So I think we feel very lonely, you know, in the first time to be far from your family, your country, your friends, your everything. So you come and you don't like, you, 
you feel like you are not welcome, you know. They didn't say that. I, it's just the way they behave, the way they are doing the things. It was like, you feel like I'm not home. And uh, days upon day, you feel you are foreign. You say, that is not my place. I'm foreign here, you know. You just, more days upon days, you just feel like that. Indian upper caste brain and consciousness is racist and it also becomes casteist. When racism and casteism coexist, it becomes brutally violent. A white racial racist will be only once violent again as the black, but a casteist and racist is constantly violent. But how do they explain today the discrimination of an indigenous animal, which is most economic animal, which does not become respectable if we don't have race consciousness in us. Nobody is questioning cow being sacred animal. Nobody is questioning cow being the animal on which alone we write an essay in our schools. Why black buffalo is not divine, national, respectable animal. And buffalo can be a, a, an animal on which no god can travel, only Yama, the god of death, travels. He's not interesting, are you sure? Yeah, he's not interesting. You know that, you know that mom told me? Indian, yes. Because they are Indian. They I have been in uh, Rishikesh, Kochi, Bihar. I've been in Marina Beach, Chennai, Pondicherry. I've been in Nagpur, Bangalore, Jharkhand, Patna, Jalanda, Golden Temple. Um, you know, I mean, many places. You find difference of culture, different people, but mixed as one. So in India, you know, if you are here, you are going to learn what I call the tolerance in the sand. You have to accept, you have to agree that all the people exist, all the religion exists, all the culture exists. You know, that is what I, you know, I got out for, uh, from India. You know, India is amazing. Day by day, I used to learn something, every day. Like, uh, I remember I went to one hospital, then one of the doctors was like, you are from Africa? He said, yeah, which country? I said, Congo. Huh? I heard like, uh, in Africa, you guys are eating humans. I said, yes, I can eat you even if you want. You know, people always say that the uneducated people are the people who are really ignorant, they, they racially discriminate because they do not know, they are backward and everything. But I guess that experience proved everything wrong because as I visited the slum areas, they were much more welcoming. It never strikes to me that I'm black when I'm around this place. Until I go down into the city now, and then I see all those stairs around me. And then I just look around and then I say, oh, by the way, I'm black. <laughs> There's our occupational differences and that difference reflects in your social interaction also. So you can go to your house, but 
uh, that interaction is not as intimate as like there's a distinction between how intimately you are interacting with other caste people. Our village is a Muslim populated village, but even then there is uh, four houses will be from the upper caste and then the houses at the outskirts will be uh, lower caste Muslim houses and then if you go outskirts, mein jayenge, to you'll see Dalit households, tribal hamlets. So this was the kind of structure which, uh, which I realized later on ki, oh, that is how the structure of all the villages that I saw growing up were mostly. If you're from a landowning class, you need not necessarily be a Jat or a Jat Sikh or a Rajput. I mean, whoever owns land feels um, uh, he has the power to, you know, take the law in his own hands. Is somewhere near Abohar, where uh, a liquor baron and uh, he was angry with two of his old employees and he actually chopped off their hands and legs. One of them has died. What is it that makes him do it? He thinks he has the power to do it. There is a historical background to it. Second, he can get away with it. Land is also about an idea in your head of a certain permanence. I mean, about lineage, about ancestral receivables, all of that. Land is a very complex cultural issue. Land is not a tradable commodity. But did you teach people to negotiate about giving away their a parcel of land which they had been tilling for four generations? You land at an airport 35 kilometers away and you get onto a ring road running through, you get onto an elevated highway and you go down to Electronic City. You don't link up to the city itself. The other element is what happens to the rest of it, which remains where it is. It remains even more congested because you have taken up the space, the physical space to do these things. The negotiations on the ground were linked to other negotiations in the cultural space. So they could be countered in the cultural space and certain ideas came up certain beliefs came up from that. And as a result, the spread of those beliefs influenced what is happening on the ground. But as those kind of interactions sort of, uh, I won't say disappeared, but declined to some extent, then the whole uh, negotiation takes place only in the, on the streets. And that is invariably a more violent process. because you kind of put these institutions or these, even if an IT park or something in a village setup or in a rural setup, and it is very difficult to integrate, but interaction means, again, I don't know how that interaction would happen if there are two diverse backgrounds. You have these college students who have come here to study for uh, three, four years, and then you have these uh, people permanently there and very little commonalities between them. Other than one person providing some, resources for the other. As soon as I got home, then I had a phone call and then the person said I shouldn't come out because they're burning a car at the Saptagri school junction and then all Africans are being attacked. We didn't know what was going on. All we had to do was just communicate via WhatsApp. It was very difficult because for days we had to stay in the house without food. You have to call some vendors and then they will come and charge you three times the price of what exactly you're supposed to be buying. All we knew was that the first car had caused an accident and the occupants of the second car were badly beaten up, including a woman who was uh, stripped. The area was in a state of complete tension. There was that that thing, you know, like how one incident has triggered off a larger, in some sense, social boycott of students in that area. On the other hand, we had the media, which was began by reporting the incident inaccurately, but at least favorably for the Tanzanian students. And subsequently, it went on to say all sorts of things about the girl, about the students, that they actually caused the accident, that the girl is lying. Canada newspapers were also quite terrible. Tanzanian student was brutally assaulted, stripped and paraded naked by an angry mob. Being part of the media, I can confess that there is no such intelligence in this. It's, if, if it's a crime, they would like to build more crime into it rather than create an understanding. Because they want you to consume every segment of news with a certain kind of unreason. Because that's easier. If you start reasoning, then there are a lot of other problems, attendant problems that come. So if you say, for instance, any local channel had held a uh, panel discussion on race relations and brought both sides 
and help make them negotiate and tell them that we'll all be friends from tomorrow. You think that would have fetched you numbers or showing repeatedly the lynching of a lady and the burning of a car? What would get you numbers? When the locals are involved and there is a perennial issue is going on, it is a kind of first degree outburst. If you are not able to approach this issue, this is going to be one of the very serious law and order issue in Bangalore city. So African students are our guests. They are a student. They are coming from Africa, they are in India, that too in Bangalore, they are studying purpose. It is our duty to protect them. It is our duty to educate them. It is our duty if at all anybody involves in illegality, illegal crime, it is our duty to arrest them. We cannot see entire African students as a criminal or any negative mentality. You can decide that, okay, I'm, no, I'm, I'm going back to my country. It wouldn't change anything. But if you say, okay, it happened, let me try and educate people that this that happened to me as an example is not good. You can start not from the lo like talking to the local people, from the people in your class. When it happens instantly, anybody, anybody will have that pain. Anybody would have that like that aggression, like I hate these people. It's there. But the thing is that how long can you hate? We live in a time now where these eruptions are more and more possible because the things that cause these eruptions are less and less uh, nuanced. Today it can be black, tomorrow it can be defeating, tomorrow it can be walked on the wrong side of the road. The boundary keeps moving, the line every day keeps moving to what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Or it's up to an individual to figure out how they get treated. It, it needs to be them saying that today I got pointed and laughed at or whatever and tomorrow I might get pointed and laughed at but the next day the auto man will say hello to me and I will be pointed and laughed at. It's not going to change the pointed and laughed at. What is going to change is that more and more people are going to smile at you. More and more people are going to say hello to you. More and more people are going to think it's okay for you to be around. That's what's important. Yes, there is going to always be that one person with a ah, ah, ah. That's not going to change. How can that change? Asking people not to have difference or people not to see difference or people not to like people because of like petty things. People don't like people for petty things all the time. Came around and vampire them, extract them taxes in a booms or walls. No one is companies follow them, see all tactics. Politics is working for them, and media, media is working for them. Police working for them, no talk is working for them, and money and violence is working for them. We get a lot of foreign students to come here and study, uh, but I don't think there is proper preparation before you get those two. Are the Indian students told about the students who come from abroad? How much is the assimilation? How much is the interaction between these students? I don't think they are there. Uh, you, you're even catering to their needs. So where do they go? They go out, they go into the market. The market is not prepared to receive them. So they could run into problems. Especially when some Indians like are looking at him, you know, in that weird way or whereby people are surprised, like they've never seen an African before. He really gets angry. Because you know, some, sometimes uh, those days when back. we came, when we came, they, you know, they, they look too much. You, know, you can find that, you know, you are on, the, maybe you are even on the bus. You want to sit. Someone can't even leave a seat for you because they are surprised to see you, you know. So, so you find that, you no, know, yeah, the seat is there, there's a seat, there's no one. And they just said, no, you can't sit here. I'm waiting for a girl to come, to come and sit here. It's not possible. It's a public transport. Everyone who comes early will sit. Yeah, so also that one, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who I can talk to about that.
So most of the people are hanging out in the different uh, pub, try to be together and share problems. The short time they are getting, they are being together, gathering together. We have also some uh, church. There is a lot of activities. They are playing football. There are exams. Before exam, there are some uh, tests. So we can say that uh, there is no time of hanging out. It was Burundians who were going to the Congolese parties. A birthday of one of the friends we, we knew. For very excitement, uh, Yannick was calling, saying that, uh, where are you, are you reaching, when are you reaching? It was kind of, it was taking some meal near uh, Taj. It was in Jalanda, we were near Ramamandi, so we were taking some much time. So he said, I'm going to wait them to the venue, so you, you shall join me later. And then that's when the tragedy happens, while he was going to, to the party. Char para. ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਂ ਚੌਕੀ ਇੰਚਾਰਜ ਬੱਸ ਸਟੈਂਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤਾਇਨਾਤ ਸੀਗਾ ਕਿ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਰਾਤ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਕਰੀਬ 1 ਵਜੇ ਇਤਲਾਹ ਮਿਲੀ ਮੌਕੇ ਤੇ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਵੇਖਿਆ ਕਿ ਉੱਥੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਮਤਰਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੋਨਿਕ ਨਿੱਕੀ ਦਾ ਖੂਨ ਦੁੱਲਾ ਹੈ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੀ ਕੁੱਟਮਾਰ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆ ਛੋਟੇ ਦੀਆਂ ਬੋਤਲਾਂ ਬੀਰ ਦੀਆਂ ਬੋਤਲਾਂ ਤੇ ਹੋਰ ਇੱਟਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕਾਫੀ ਮਤਰਾ ਚ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈ ਕਾਫੀ ਖੂਨ ਉੱਥੇ ਦਾ ਦੁੱਲਾ ਕਾਫੀ ਖੂਨ ਖਰਾਬਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੀ ਇੱਕ ਬੱਸ ਸਟੈਂਡ ਕੇ ਪਾਸ ਵੀ ਇੱਕ ਠੀਕਾ ਹੈ ਕਿਸੇ ਲੜਕੀ ਨੂੰ ਕਮੈਂਟਸ ਕਰ ਦੇ ਤੋਂ ਮੂਲੀ ਜੀ ਚੜਾਇਆ ਪੰਜ ਮਾਨਨ ਕੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਤੂੰ ਤੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਮੈਂ ਉਹ ਜੀ ਆਟੋ ਮੇ ਬੈਠ ਕੇ ਨਿਕਲ ਉਹਨਕੀ ਸ਼ਕਲ ਤੋਂ ਇੱਕ ਜੈਸੀ ਥੀ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਉਹਨੇ ਪੇ ਹਮਲਾ ਕਰ ਦਿਆ ਦੇ ਦੈਟ ਵਿਦ ਦੈਟ ਸੋਡਾ ਬਟਰ ਬੋਟਲ ਆਨ ਦੀ ਹੈ ਰੇ ਹਿਮਟੋਮਾ ਇਨ ਹਿਸ ਪੋਸਟਰੀਅਰ ਕੋਸਾ ਇਨ ਵੈਰੀ ਵਾਈਟ ਪੋਇਟ ਆਨ ਦ ਟੈਂਪਲ ਬਟ ਇਟ ਇਸ ਵੀ ਕਲਾਸੀਫਾਈ ਐਸ ਡੈਂਟਿਸਟ ਲਾਈਕ ਹੀ ਫੈਲ ਅਨਕੌਂਸ਼ੀਅਸ ਇਟ ਇਸ ਓਨਲੀ ਆਨ ਮੰਡੇ ਵੇਰ ਅ ਮੈਸੇਜ ਵਾਸ ਕਨਵੇਇਡ ਟੂ ਐਵਰੀਬਾਡੀ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਸ਼ਾਲ ਮੀਟ ਐਟ ਓਰੀ ਹਸਪੀਟਲ in Jalanda. And that's the first time all Burundians, none left home. Everybody was there. And he was coming from some scanning. And then that he passed okay. by. He passed that's, by. That's when we saw that. Passed by with a very huge bandage, like this. Someone when inconscient. We... He was even inconscient. I thought thing that uh, is he alive? or will you survive oui je, je voudrais dire que on sait bien que ce film soit diffusé mais qu'il sert d'exemple parce que perdre une vie une vie c'est, c'est quelque chose de grave il faut que les gens apprennent par ce film qu'il faut respecter la vie de, de chacun parce que d'une part personne ne gagne personne ne gagne on perd plus tôt on perd des amis on perd un enfant je souhaite que ce film puisse servir aux autres les gens sont égaux il faut qu'on évite le racisme ça ne paye pas ça ne sert à rien When we came, we were like, we also want to know, we were like, talk to him, where we go, we were uh, trying to, to know people and the late people know you. Then after all this, then you start, you know, living by your, uh, your own and uh, even if you meet with someone who really want to, to know you, and we try to be like, Is it safe? It should not be incumbent upon students to integrate themselves with the local population. Why should they have to go out of their way to do charity? Great if they do. But even if a student did not do any of these things, even if he or she came to India just to study, get a degree and leave, it should be fine. On their backs and on their, through their pockets, an entire local economy thrives. so the landlord benefits the shopkeeper benefits the colleges benefit universities benefit the police benefit fro gets hundreds and hundreds and thousands of rupees and fines from all of these students and after they've given away all their money they go back to their home countries we see them as a vessel to be drained dry 
we don't see them as human beings who have come here to study though see this is a sick majority state punjab now but uh, the same problem of casteism is as deeply embedded and exclusion is as strong as in any other uh, hindu states i think this telling that ikalavya and seat of learning it was only for a handful of people for pandits for brahmins ordinary people were not supposed to know anything of knowledge in that sense what constitutes knowledge is already a product of power relations but what is driving this association is simply brute empirical association which endures that is to say we have hardly any rich powerful people who are also unquestionably dark Scolini with you on a proper worldwide from PRI Public Radio International and we are listening to Senegalese American pop star Akon singing in Hindi. Yes, you heard right. The song is Chalak Chalo and it's the lead number from the 2011 sci-fi Bollywood hit Ra 1. Akon's Bollywood debut must have been especially exciting back home in Senegal. where hindi film music is massively popular i tell you everywhere you find it it's just one example of the many musical and cultural connections between africa and india ek step nahi hai apna apna sab ka alag alag sab apna apna jo basta hai aur idham ke upar hota hai kis tarah se abhi bhi tum dekho bachcha hoga wo dhule mein bhi hoga jab humare shuru hua dhamal to wo log kande hi shuru ho jate hain जंगल में ऐसे ही पहनता हूँ ऐसे ही लोग पहनते हैं तो ये बना दिया When the Arab marchants, they brought this uh, tribes from Africa. so they try to sell out in different areas of india say for example the central province and the western province it is called hafsis and then when they settle down in gujarat it is called the siddis hum ne nidam ka party ka bana ke lae laage humko thoda rehne ke aate lege de diye samjhe uske baad nidam ka ab tak puchte nahi मजदूरी करके काम होटलों में इधर उधर करके करा गया रजिस्ट्री करा दी as far as i know the history is like that our sidi people have come from across from the ethiopia and uh, zambia and uh, then portuguese left them here only and they went back these people are having no passports or nothing or nothing so they went in the forest pockets to survive and the path ke beech beech mein hum log rehte lekin old ahmedabad mein sare area mein hum log ko jante सिद्धिस है सिद्धि बादशाह लोग यहाँ रहते लेकिन जब हम ब्रिज क्रॉस करके हम लोग जाते न्यू अहमदाबाद में जैसे कि सी जी रोड आश्रम रोड नवरंगपुरा वहाँ पे कोई हम लोग को जानता ही नहीं था बल्कि हम लोग 300 साल से अहमदाबाद में ही रह रहे हैं सदियों से हमारे यहाँ बहुत लोग आए हमारे पास रहे बहुत सी कहानियाँ लिखी लेकिन आखिरी लाइन में उन्होंने हमें गुलाम ही क्यों बनाया आए यहाँ 
सिद्धी से जुमे और गाने को हम आए या सिद्धी से जुमे और गाने को आए या सिद्धी से जुमे और गाने को हाँ एक्चुअली मेरा नाम है कमला है कमला बाबू सिद्धी मतलब मेरा डैडी का नाम पहले बाबू है तो मैं एक्चुअली मंचीगेरी चिकोत्ती बोल के एक छोटा सा गांव है वहाँ पे पढ़ी हूँ स्कूल के बाद ये लोग क्या करते थे हम लोगों को लेके जाके ग्राउंड में चार पांच चक्कर लगाते थे तो वहाँ पे एक दिन माँ बोले कि नहीं यहाँ पे अल्लापुर में सिलेक्शन है बड़े बड़े लोग आए आप लोग जाइए बोल के तो इन्विटेशन आया तो हम लोगों को जितना भी बच्चे से सब भी सर ने लेके गए For the first time, 350 children assembled in Allahpur School, and 65 children, 40 have gone up to the international and national level in different disciplines. स्ट्रेंथ To, to make us more interested in that field. When this started happening, and we are start athletic arena, we are start to dominate. Then um, all Karnataka they started discriminating. Very unfortunately, the other inmates of the Sai Center, even the office staff of the Sai Center, they ridicule this African. Look, children of India, and they always treated them as if they are come from other country like Nigeria and Kenya. Some or other, they started feeling homesick, and ultimately, due to poor management also, the center was closed and children were sent back. So, if, for example, uh, one can show, and I don't know if it's been shown, that in Africa there are these biological traits or genetic traits that uh, promote endurance, where lung capacity is be better, and therefore these people can, uh, you know, run for longer distances, etc. We can probably train them to become more endurant, and therefore run longer distances. Earlier, we used to go to the village, see their parents, see their brothers and elder brothers, elder sisters. To what height it has gained, whether this boy of 12 years and 14 years, whether he will grow to that height or not. Now, by saliva, you can tell that whether he will become a sprinter or not. That doesn't necessarily mean, or that never means, that the gene variant is responsible for doing the menial kind of work that they are doing, or that they are preordained at birth because they have inherited this genetic form that they are preordained to do menial menial kind of work. The imposition of uh, This mental construct of superiority and inferiority is uh, complete nonsense because if anybody has to be superior, it has to be the Africans because they are our ancestors. Uh, I was playing uh, somewhere in West Africa in Benin Republic to be precise, second division team. So after the game that day, the guy called me and said, "What's your name? Where are you from?" I have a contact in India. I'm taking you to India. I said India. He said yes. I said okay. And uh, the day at the airport, when I was the day I was flying, I asked him, which team am I going to play? Which team am I going in India? Because we were two, two of us. And he wrote one name in the piece of paper and gave to me. And I looked at it. The name he wrote for me is Isben. Istanbul is uh, 80,000 people. It was a big city, one of the best cities in, in the in the world. You know, it's cosmopolitan. And then I was playing against Fenerbahce, and uh, the captain from Fenerbahce was the legend in Turkey. He's a good player, good player. Emre Belazu, you know. And you can say something wrong, a bad, but but You know, this is for me. 
it was, I was surprised. You can't tell to me where you can't. Yeah, this is, I just understand, you know. And uh, I always take my my calm, be patient, say nothing. Because my mind, I know what I can do for the next game, and I show him for the next game what I can do. Yeah, I don't speak too much. I show him, and this is this is was unbelievable, you know. India has got two problems. One is caste problem. Second is a fair and lovely problem. Because only fair looking people are the gentlemen. All blackies are not human beings. जब हम गांव जाते हैं इलापुर में जाते हैं बस में बैठेंगे तो वहाँ पे अगर वो तीन सीट रहता है तो तीन सीट में तो ब्राह्मण्स बैठते हैं ना बिल्कुल छोड़कर नहीं देते जानपुष की और ये कुछ पेपर रख देंगे क्योंकि उनका आदमी बोलेंगे इस जगह है क्या पूछेगा तो नहीं नहीं हमारे आदमी आने वाले आने वाले नहीं रहते लेकिन उनका कोई भी आएगा तो हाँ हमारा आदमी बोल के बैठा देना मेरे को ही हुआ लास्ट ईयर अरे वो सब लोग बोलते हैं कि वो देखो 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 यू स्टिल दे डोंट नो माय नेम स्टिल दे आर डोंट नो आई एम फ्रॉम इंडिया अठारह साल काम करने के बाद ओके नाउ लाइक यू सी डॉक्टर देन ओके आई एम फ्रॉम आई यू सी आई एम इंडियन एंड यू हैव फिनिश टॉकिंग ऑल द बुलशिट अबाउट योरसेल्फ एंड ऑल योर इंट्रोडक्शन इ do you go back to your country? Oh, which country do you want me to go back to? मैं कारवार से बोलता हूँ तो उसको सोचता है कि वो एक कोई कंट्री है मैं इसलिए बोलना पड़ता है गोवा से लेकिन मोहन मेरे सामने खड़ा है तभी बोलता है गोवा से कहीं चले तू When I started playing football, when I went to play, I think so it was under 16 nationals in Orissa. And the Punjab coach was there, and the fourth official was from Manipur. He went to the fourth official. He said he's not Indian. And the match was about to start. I was already inside the ground. The referee came running. Where are your documents? That is where problem come. Problem come in visa and passport. That newspaper bring it that uh, they have started playing football in Assam jail history done by Henry. So after then, everybody came to know that football is going on in the jail. And after then, Emile came. He spoke to Superintendent of Police that they should take me to the Delhi to make my passport with escort. And they, they should bring me back to the Assam again for the coaching job. But Emile told me, do not inform the media that you have no visa. He told me, you tell them you have visa, you have passport. I spent one year, one year, 20 days. This is the second time. First time, eight months. Second time, one year, 20 days. Attention, please. This is the final call for what do you What do you call racism? Racism means you, you know, putting the boundaries between you and someone because the person is not like you. So it happens everywhere, but it depends on the gravity of it. Racism is there. even in Nigeria, it is. There is. People from the West don't want to mix up with people from the East. The Christians don't want to mix up with the Muslims. It's racism. Any black guy on the street, you just say Nigeria. I said, no, 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 don't mistake. It could be from Ghana, it could be from Ivory Coast, it could be from Kenya, it could be from anywhere, Congo. He's not Nigerian. They say, no, 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 Nigeria, the whole Africa is Nigeria. I say, no, no, it's not. Nigeria is just one part of Africa in the Western side. And that's it. Origin of human was in Africa about 160,000 years back. So from there, people have migrated to other continent and colonized. Whatever the characteristic features we have, 
either uh, eye color or air color, the way we speak, the way we walk, everything is coded in our DNA. There is a specific mutation which made our skin color from dark to light. And there is this pigmentation on the skin that will allow so much of sunlight to get in and depending on the extent of sunlight that there is in the environment. This is all controlled by a pigment called melanin and there's been a series of adaptations because in, depending on which particular area or region of the earth you are, that region of the earth if it gets more sunlight then you need less penetration, if there is less sunlight you need more penetration and so on and so forth. So this, uh, you know, the skin being extracted from Nepali women, it's also based on a horrible misconception. What the traffickers do is, they say that we, we are going to provide you the best quality skin because, they, you know, they, they get skin from fair Nepalese women. As you come towards the Thirai, you know, you'll get dark skinned women. When you go upward, you'll find women who have a lighter skin tone. It's mainly because of the sun rays. So that's how the traffickers also operate in terms of skin. It's used in almost every aesthetic surgery that happens. Be it penis enlargement, breast enhancement, uh, nose job, lip job. It's 100 square inch, 10 into 10 square inch of skin. The international value of that uh, piece is 2 lakh to 2.5 lakh. So we black people have Certainly, we have skin color issues. Um, you know, we, uh, Nigeria is the second largest skin bleacher uh, for black nation uh, in the world. But fundamentally what's happening is people are changing what they think is not wanted, what they feel is, uh, is, is unappreciated, and trying to alter their bodies so that they look uh, a way that they feel is great. I've had people tell me, won't you consider bleaching your skin? And I'm thinking, for what? I've never been in a boardroom and people don't listen anywhere in the world. I've never walked into a room, maybe they'll judge me at first because she's fat and she's dark and what could she possibly have to say? But by the time I open my mouth, I, I've never had anyone not come and line up to talk to me. So I don't feel the need to change anything. And Indians conventionally and down the generations have believed that fair skin is better, is more beautiful, is more desirable. I think uh, this, is, uh, this is a very deep-rooted belief in Indian society. So if you have darker skin and you want your skin to be brighter, fairer, then some manufacturer comes along to meet your requirement. What Fair and Lovely has done is that they are trying to meet a human need. It's been actually constructed and spoon-fed to us, saying this is exotic, that's normal, that's ugly. Everything germinates from that. That's your core idea and what are they trying to sell. So we cast according to that, we find locations according to that, we start putting together production costs according to that, and then we shoot. Large number of creative people, large number of marketing people, stylists, photographers, you know, directors. There's a huge ecosystem who actually gives you that image, right? The original idea, it starts from saying, okay, this pattern is working. Where girls, girl go to an interview, get rejected, she go to the loop, put some fair and lovely, come back and she get the job. And then on top of that, they will get a like, movie star. And then even if the idea is really pathetic, it will always work. You know, you just put the name of, you know, or the face of some, some beautiful girl and it's all over. You were given a certain kind of medium where the medium required a certain kind of skin tone, a certain skin gamma, where the woman's face would approach white. Ideally, it should approach not alabaster white, but the next shade. You know, you have to sound politically correct, so no one will uh, pitch it like that. It's very, it's couched in different kind of language. Earlier, it was, na na na, moila na. Moila means dirty. So the word color 
is used in Sanskrit in the sense of varna. So varna means color or varna means light. Now this word occurs in the Rugveda in the sense of some color. Which color is it that they are not clear? And so the word color is associated with Dasa. The word color is associated with Asura in Vedic literature. And in later course of time, the word color changed its meaning to Jati or caste. And therefore, in the Rugveda or in Vedic text, the word Brahmana Varana is used. Sometimes in the Mahabharata also, the word Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, Varana is used. But the, the sense over there is not just a specific color, but a community having certain origins. So the word Varana moved to Jati. So historically, there is some kind of relationship between Varana and Jati. Which comes first? Is it that we develop stereotypes based on prejudice we already hold? Or is it that we are only, uh, we are the society, the modern society creates uh, stereotypes which we consume from which prejudice comes? Act actually, the stereotype actually emanates from this kind of impossibility to become one. So the prejudice, the, the birth of prejudice takes place only in the limits of one's, one's own. I can't become like that, so I have to offer this. Everybody stereotypes in every single country. You will find that people use the what is foreign, what is from the outside, as a stereotype. When you want to render a place weak, you have to split people from one another. You have to you have to make them fight with each other, or you have to make them see their differences. You know, so it's often like that with stereotypes. When you don't like them, you start, when they when they hurt you, you start to be against them. But when they can serve you, you deliberately play them. And I think everybody does that. You know, in the industry over here, the standard is fair, long hair. You know, and I'm the exact opposite of that. Although I do have the height, I do have the body, but I'm, I'm dark skinned. But the way the world is going, how everyone is trying to control the other person or position the other person. I think it's like almost like we're trying to make turn each other into mannequins, you know? Where I can just put this mannequin's hand okay, can't put his hand up. <laughs> put the hand up and it just stays that way. Or do something to its body and it just stays that way. But the thing is we're not mannequins, no, we're human beings and there's just so much going on. There's too much going on inside us. You see me, you see a black girl, you see an African African woman or a black girl. You don't see a human being. Why? I am a human being. You are a human being as well. I saw something on Snapchat. Somebody was warning every, every one of us Africans, don't go outside. It's, it's really bad out there. Some of my friends started telling me, don't come to the college, there's a lot of noise here. And I went to Facebook and I saw horrible things. And people were, African boys were being beaten up. They were being accused of, you know, eating that Indian boy or killing him and eating him or something like that. That time there are this gang of Indians going into their apartments, checking their properties, their fridges. So it was a little bit frightening. What what about my security? What about my safety? This is something something that was not condemned. Something the government didn't do anything about as in the awareness. These are people, people are being attacked in your country. You don't make any awareness about it. What do you expect? That means you have emboldened the local people. You might walk by, some Indian Indians might pass by and you might hear them saying Maru, 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 Maru. Yeah, something like that. I mean, beat, beat, right? So it's really... When, when we think about uh, caste, or when we think about uh, sensitivity to color more generally, uh, it is alignment with privilege that is at work. Because we are a caste society, we go by this Hindustani term called Aukat. 
and aukat is at heart a relational thing you can't have aukat for a single individual aukat is always your standing relative to someone else and these people of another race become available for the staging of relative superiority for me i'm not i'm not angry at a very direct racist because he's direct he's not hiding he's not consolidating it he's just you know straight up listen i don't think i don't like you i'm not comfortable right now done he's making it very obvious but in a lot of times if if you're just an ignorant person that doesn't really believe in anything but just knows you know stereotyping or 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 grew up thinking that you know people from certain ethnicity we should not talk to i don't blame him you know but in a, a lot of people if he doesn't know anything he just he just doesn't if he just racist against you sometimes he just his perception of different like he he doesn't accept you as a different looking person and during this era when we're witnessing a huge a huge crisis of immigration we're witnessing uh, what you might call the revenge of the history of colonization and you speak about uh, violent reactions to african students in here in india and so i think it's so important to recognize that even groups that are targeted by racist strategies are not themselves immune to the appeal of racism and that includes all of us who taught you to hate the texture of your hair Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such an extent that you bleach to get like the white? Man? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind so much so that you don't want to be around each other?